uh-oh, speed bumps keep popping up on President Biden's road to the White House again in 2024. More and more polling shows growing voter concern about his age, his son, the impeachment inquiry, his running mate, and their poor approval ratings. NBC News and now The Washington Post are taking note. The Post with this blaring headline, anxiety ripples through the Democratic Party over Biden. Senator Ted Cruz with this prediction of what's on tap. In August of 2024, the Democrat kingmakers jettison Joe Biden and parachute in Michelle Obama. Barack Obama is already running the Biden administration. I think he is already the puppet master. I think the odds of Michelle Obama parachuting in in August of 2024 have risen dramatically. Let's check that and debate. Sean Duffy, co-host of The Bottom Line on FBN. Kevin Walling, former Biden campaign surrogate. Great to see you both. All right, uh, Kevin, as the Democrat on the panel, what do you think? Is she going to parachute in? And by the way, I'd pay good money to see her in a parachute. <laughs> good morning, Harris. Well, listen, I think Ted Cruz should probably spend less time podcasting and more try time trying to fund the government. Uh, but that aside, uh, you know, Barack Obama is not pulling the strings. Joe Biden has an 81 percent approval rating among Democrats. Donald Trump just has a 66 percent approval rating among Republicans. So Democrats love to wring our hands. We love to campaign. We love to complain. We love to write columns. We love to say, woe is me. And we need to what we need to do is fall in line and support this president uh, and mm. the vice president uh, who have successfully steered this country over the last three years. And you think you can get his polling numbers, which are way underwater with, you know, the rest of the United States. I mean, you you look at one. We're going to we're going to sure try, Harris. We're with the sure overall try. of registered voters. 60 percent are against him and her. Those big fat numbers. So your yeah, love, you think, will be enough to turn that around. That'll be interesting. Sean. Yeah, so Joe Biden had a 95 percent approval rating just a year ago. He is the sitting president. That is horrible. Only 81 percent with Democrats. Overall, Joe Biden sits at 40 to 41 percent. Here's the problem, Harris. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden sits in the Oval Office where he goes on vacation. And so he listens to advisors. But we all know who've run races. You got to go meet people. You got to be on the street. You got to hear from real people, real voters and get their feedback. And they say, listen, the number one issue for us, it's the economy. It's inflation. We don't give a darn about about climate change. We don't care about trans boys competing against girls in sports. Focus on the issues that matter to us. If Joe did that, uh, actually, I think he could put his numbers back together. I, th I still think he loses in November of 2024, but he'll be much closer. But I think right now, the way this is going, Democrats have to look for an escape valve. And whether it's Michelle Obama or Gavin Newsom, someone who can get to the 48, mm. 50 percentile range uh, of a candidate who can, you know, maybe win an election. But that is not Joe Biden. He's failing. Well, we're back to Ted Cruz and his theory of people parachuting in. And it won't be Joe Biden. We'll cover every second. Meanwhile, senators are focused on the important stuff, in quotes, because you know it's not true. Sounding off over Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's relaxing the chamber's dress code. There's a mix of outrage and mockery, along with real concerns about respect and decorum. I sat on a committee with John Fetterman, and I've seen him in a suit once. It seems completely disrespectful for the people that put him in the position. It's just another step in the movement by the Democrats to, quote, transform America, to take us to a different place, and to take us to a place that is much less respectful than we historically have been. I plan to wear a bikini tomorrow to the Senate floor to do away with the dress code. Uh, to me, debases the institution. I hope not. I hope she's not in a bikini, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> Listen, Harris, I'm not the right person to answer this because I wore this same outfit, this suit and tie to high school and, and elementary school pretty much. So, uh, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of the hoodie, but I, I think it's kind of silly to hear this, this condemnation from the Republicans falling in line behind a president, a former president, who literally inspired a mob, in the words of Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy, that desecrated the Capitol. So it, I think the Republican so, condemnation would mean a lot more and if they had respect for that building and didn't fall in line behind Donald Trump instead of worrying about a guy in a hoodie. Sean. Uh, give me a break. So I wore jeans on the House floor, but I could hide back in the cloakroom, Harris. I got to be honest about that. But listen, it's the greatest deliberative body, or it was. And to have a senator dress like a high school boy on a Saturday morning is ridiculous. You don't go to a hearing or speak on this, in this at, at the Senate chamber dressed like that. It does debase the body. And uh, shame on the Senate. Shame on Chuck Schumer. Get some decorum. Wear a suit and tie.
Yeah. I want them to put on some USA muscle shirts and go to the border and actually <laughs> see what's going on and, and cover something uh, in the Senate that really matters. That I would like. Okay. I just bet Sean looked good in those jeans. I, you know what? Let's move on. I, you look like that. You were on the debate team. That's what I'm guessing why you were dressed like that all the time, Kevin. Good to see you. <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.